Welcome to another New Jersey Forensic Accountant discussion. As many of you know uh, who have been following my YouTube channel, I've been thinking about and working in fraud and uh, litigation support for over 50 years. Uh, I have studied at MEAs. I've studied at some of the top universities in the world, Harvard University. And because of that, I've been able to work on thousands of cases. And as I discussed in a prior video, um, when we use uh, Benford's law, we applied it to uh, COVID-19 data to analyze it and see if there was any anomalies in the data. And because of that, this was uh, done a month ago, I've had thousands and thousands of requests, uh, phone calls. Uh, we have people trying to engage our firm in forensic analysis of, uh, of voter fraud. Uh, so I just want to give you an update and uh, let you know some of the things we're looking at and give you a real quick view of uh, how we would use Benford's law if we were to analyze voter fraud, which we're doing. But again, this is just a quick, and, I, and again, I go into a lot of detail because I want you to understand the basics of how we're doing it. Now, let's just do a, re a review here, okay, quick, because Benford's law, what it, what it does is it takes the first digit in a number, okay, in a large data set, and it counts the numbers, the numbers of ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives, all the way to nine. And the law states basically is when you have a large data set, the number one should be about 30% of the time repeating, the number two about 18%, and you should have a histogram that looks like this. Uh, and again, it's based on the first digit. So if you have, you know, 2,752 billion, the first number is two. Right. Um, and it's very it, it's very difficult to understand how this works and how this can detect fraud. But it's based on a logarithmic scale. And if you look at a scale and it do a little bit of uh, uh, mathematics, you can understand why why the first number would be uh, one would be 30 percent of the time. OK, because when you look at a, a logarithmic scale, the number one takes up a good portion of that scale. And uh, I'm not going to get into that detail, like I said in the past, to really understand how this and why this works. It takes weeks, months, maybe even years to understand the concept. And we've been doing this for 50 years. So, um, and again, Benford's Law, you can apply it to the distance, uh, the planets from the sun, the uh, distance of the stars from the Earth, and even the Fib Fibonacci numbers, which we use uh, for fraud detection a lot, which is great. I should do another uh, video on that. That may be more powerful than uh, Benford's law, but when you when you apply Benford's law to these, what you get is a scale that looks like this. Okay, so you know I've done it for the planet and the stars because I want to make sure they were random and not put there. And this is what you get; it's almost identical. Um, so again, the purpose of Benford's law is to look at large data sets and you and can see if they're manipulated or not. And you could look at some data sets like here. This is just some information we have here. Uh, look at this motor vehicle theft case, for example, which is the, these numbers right here. You could see that it doesn't follow Benford's law, right? The histogram is, it should be like this. So for example, here it should be 30%. It's like, you know, 37%. So what that's telling you, there's fraud. Now, how could there be fraud in motor vehicle theft. Well, it, sometimes people will steal their own car if they have a large uh, balance on the auto loan. So it does happen. And, uh, you know, we've done work for, our, for insurance companies. So that's what you kind of see, that there's fraud there. And that's what it's telling you. And then you go find it. And that's what we're going to do here. Um, and again, it, it, just think, you have to think of the, the large number, the first digit. And I'm going to go through some of that with you quickly. Okay, now, when we do voter fraud, okay, what we need to do is get a data set, the first thing. It needs to be a large data set, and it ne needs to be uh, objective, right? I don't want something that's uh, tampered with or anything. And so what we did was we went to this website here. It's a political website, and here it is. Here's the website, okay? And what this website is is political, and what they're doing is... Uh, Okay, Joe Biden's leading Georgia, and this is a picture of Georgia. You know, red is Trump and uh, blue is Biden. Um, very close, right? 
very very small difference here <laughs> and uh, this is when as of this day 99 percent of the voting but here is the vote counts now georgia has 159 counties okay where are we going here come on it's a lot of counties well there's 159 here i hope yeah 159 counties and um if you look at these counties like for example let's look at this one here this bibb county 43,000 people voted for biden 26 for trump right and he has a big lead here biden does and so i would just take this first digit and this first digit and and do an analysis and um and here, here's uh carroll county 16 to 30 37 now trump has a big lead here um and go through all 159 counties so here is some of the analysis. Again, we're doing this nationwide at this point for uh, clients. Um, this here is the data. Okay, I downloaded all the data here from this website. Here's Biden votes. Here's Trump votes. And we did some analysis because you have to take the data and make sure it's accurate. You know, I counted the counties here. I did the, uh, you know, a percentage here, what I expected. Uh, we, we verified all the first digits. Like, for example, the first digit here is three, right? The first digit here is three, okay? It makes sense. And I did the same thing over here for Trump, okay? First digit's five. And remember, that's the whole thing with Penford's Law. You're just taking the digits and, and doing an analysis. So now when I do the analysis, here's what I get for Biden. Okay, 47 of the 159 counties, the first digit was one, okay? The, the, sec, uh, the second, it, you know, two was 40% of the time, four was 20. So this is what the results of the data show, okay? And this is the percentage, okay? I would expect that 47% uh, of the, the counties be, you know, at 30%. For here, for number two, it should be 20, it should be 40, it should be 18% uh, because this is what you expect. It's 25%, Okay. Here's what it should be, and this is what it actually is. Okay, it should be 12, it's 10. It should be 10, it's 13. It should be 8, it's 4. 7, here we got the same. So this is telling you that there's some issues with this data. Okay, and then for visual, I would use the histogram. And again, this histogram is way out of whack. You know, it's like a roller coaster. Okay, it should be like a slide, right? What should it look like? It should look like this. Where's my stuff? It should look like this, right? But what does it look like? It looks like this. Okay? So you don't need all my fancy degrees and everything to figure this out. That there's a problem here. Now let's look at Trump. Okay, Trump, again, here's the frequencies, right? And I would expect, this is what I expect, this is what the actual is. Now look, it's actually, the ones are under, counted. Okay, it should be 30, it's 27. Uh, twos or more. So again, this is pretty bad, not as bad as Biden's, but there's definitely uh, anomalies in this data and a big concern. So here is like the first step we would do in our, our voter fraud, and fraud analysis. So let's take, let's go back here and let's look at this. Okay, so here's the data summaries, right? Biden and Trump, and, you, and this is what it should be, right? Digits, the first uh, three should be there 12% of the time. You could tell that there's just a lot of anomalies in here, right, when you look at the data. Uh, and the histogram analysis, Biden, again, these things are way, way, <laughs> there's some serious issues here. So now, this is the first step we would do, okay, to make sure, because if, if, if I had good histograms and good analysis, I would say, listen, there's a very low probability of fraud here. But they, these are pointing to massive fraud. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that, uh, you know, uh, Biden's numbers are fraudulent or Trump's are correct or Trump's are fraudulent or Biden's are correct? No. It just means there's massive fraud, okay, in the, in the Georgia data that we downloaded from political. That's all that means. Um, and f to prove it, we'd have to, like I said, I would send 100 uh, forensic accountants in there, you know, and we would just go county by county and check everything. Um, very expensive, extremely time consuming. But if it's important, we do it. Uh, and then we'd be able to tell. Now, 
what we typically do is who benefits from fraud, right? Who would benefit from fraud? That's the next step as a forensic accountant. Okay, is it Trump or is it Biden? Well, I think they both would benefit from fraud if they both if they won. But right now, I mean, I don't even know who, who's going to win Georgia at this point. But right now, Biden's winning. Okay, so who would benefit? It would be Biden. Uh, so our results from the initial is, is basically, this is the, in conclusion, Benford analysis applied to the 159 county votes of Georgia for the presidential election of 2020 indicates that the data is manipulated. Okay, uh, that's the results. And again, this is just a quick understanding so you guys can understand what we do. And this is the first step. The next step is really, really you know, that's where we get into all our proprietary information, Fibonacci numbers and all that kind of good stuff. But this is just a high level analysis. But there's definitely manipulation in those counties, in at least the data we have. Now, listen, guys, leave any kind of YouTube comments below. Um, uh, you know, we try to get back. There's, there's, there's tens of thousands of people calling and, and leaving YouTube uh, uh, comments, but leave them below. Uh, we will be able to answer some of them and eventually we'll get back to all of them. But Please, if you do like this video and you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll make sure we get some more things on here. Now, listen, we only talk about fraud. We talk about, you know, uh, uh, how to uh, do matrimonial issues. We talk about lots of stuff because in a 50 year period that we've been doing this, it's not only fraud, but a lot of things we do are related to fraud. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. Bye.